Political commentator Sue O'Connell joins us right now. Sue, I want to talk hurricanes here. And listen, I don't want to politicize this, but I want to give people the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Helene has caused a lot of damage, a lot of tragedy, tragedy for Americans out there. Milton appears poised to do the same this week. That could have major impacts on voting. It could have a major impact on the outcome of the election. That's right, Colton. And, you know, usually we don't politicize storms, but they're being politicized for us, so we have to talk about it. Okay, North Carolina, Georgia, and, of course, Florida, obviously experiencing power outages, also mail delays. Some roads to some polling stations washed out. There are concerns about getting enough poll volunteers on Election Day. And, of course, the obvious personal tragedies and losses that citizens are experiencing. Election officials in these three states say they are working on plans so that every ballot cast in this election will be counted in Georgia. Only three stations, polling stations, have had to be moved due to the storm damage. In North Carolina, they have expanded the authority of election officials and giving them the authority to make changes needed to move polling locations if necessary. They're also distributing absentee ballots at shelters. In Florida, is working with the United States Postal Service and also seeking that emergency authority for the election officials. They're all working very hard, but obviously there will be challenges to voting. And as far as the outcome of the election, look, we spoke last week about how the climate crisis has almost been absent from both candidates' stump speeches. Many residents of the impacted states who were climate skeptics may be indeed changing their minds, and that could, of course, impact who they cast their vote for, Colton. Well, I want to zero in quickly on Florida here, right? Because regardless of what happens with Hurricane Milton, I've heard you say in the newsroom that you think that Florida might not be as locked up by Trump and Republicans as many folks believe and we perceive. Why is that? So, Colton, there's a chance, a very outside and slim chance, but nonetheless a chance that deep red Florida's election results could be a surprise. Now, why do I say that? Well, first, there are two ballot questions Floridians will be voting on. One question would allow the personal use of marijuana, and the other would overrule Governor DeSantis's abortion ban. Now, these two questions will definitely drive Democrats to get their vote counted. And the race for the U.S. Senate down there, it has Republican incumbent Rick Scott. He's in a dead heat with Democrat and former Congressperson Debbie Muscarelle Powell. And Florida also has a large percentage of Haitian American voters who I bet are a little bit angry about Donald Trump and J.D. Vance's recent comments. So you add all of these factors together. And there is a chance, a small chance, that Florida could turn blue. All right, we'll have to wait and see. Kamala Harris, let's talk about the, the Harris camp right now. She's been on a bit of a media blitz lately. She appeared on a popular podcast with a, a Boston girl, Alex Cooper, yep. this week. She's doing Howard Stern's show. She was on The View earlier this morning. I looked up and saw her. She's got Colbert as well. To be clear, she's also sat down with CNN. She's done 60 Minutes. We've seen those clips as well, MSNBC. But talk about the decision to do podcasts, yeah. right? At Stern, all of these talk shows. There's not a lot of space for her to talk policy there, which is something that people have been critical of, of her about, that she's not talking about policy enough. That's right, Colton. And, and there's not a lot of room to talk policy there. But as I keep saying also around the newsroom and on the TV, the Harris-Walls campaign has pages and pages of policy posted, as does Trump. So if you want to see policy, just go to the campaign's website. But what these light news or entertainment shows do have is space to get to know the candidates. Now, remember, Harris is really just introducing herself to a majority of voters, right? And the podcast format allows Harris to be herself, use full-bodied examples to describe what her policies are and how they would impact real people, as she likes to say. And it, she gets to contrast herself against Trump. And I know you know this, Colton, the audio portion of the podcast, which we used to call radio, is a very intimate way to communicate to listeners. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see another poll bump after this week around the pods. All right. So thank you. Yes, the Everyone Kids at Home podcasting used to be called radio back in the We day. invented it. Yeah, Sue, as always, thank you. <laughs> hey, listen, don't forget, everyone, we recap all the week's big political headlines every Sunday on At Issue. You can join Sue, Corey Smith, and Matt Pritchard. It airs at 1130. That is immediately following Meet the Press. All right.